Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode one of Power Play, where we travel the world to explore the hard truths of the energy transition. I'm speaking to you from one of the most extraordinary archaeological discoveries of the 20th century, the Terracotta Army here in Xi'an, China. As we wander amongst these life-size warriors, it's hard not to feel transported back in time, over 2,200 years ago, to the reign of China's first imperial emperor, Qin Shi Huang of the Qin Dynasty. I was amazed by the thousands of soldiers, horses, and chariots around me, each one standing guard for eternity. I chose to kick off the first episode of Power Play here because the Qin Dynasty in Xi'an marks the start of a unified China and the beginning of global trade. Xi'an was the starting point of the Silk Road around 130 BC, which for the first time allowed the exchange of culture, technology, and ideas between the East and the West. This was just as Julius Caesar was about to come on the scene and the Roman Empire was on the rise. And I also chose to put episodes two through four of Power Play in China, because if you want to really understand the energy transition, you have to start by understanding China. By far the world's largest energy consumer, largest carbon emitter, largest deployer of renewable energy, and the dominant manufacturer of much of the hardware of the energy transition. And the simple fact is that if we don't succeed with an energy transition in China, what we do in the rest of the world doesn't matter. After China, I'll be touring North America, and then I'm planning to spend my entire summer in Europe, after which I'll be headed back to Asia to hit Japan, Korea, and Southeast Asia, and then I'm off to the Middle East, Africa, and South America. But before we dive deeper into China's energy transition, let me share a bit about myself. My name is Paul Browning, and I'm from the middle-class suburbs of America's Rust Belt. I was born in a suburb of Detroit. I grew up on the west side of Cleveland. I went to college in Pittsburgh, and then I went to grad school in Troy, New York. For the past 35 years, I've been in the thick of the energy transition, starting as an engineer and progressing to executive roles at Caterpillar Solar Turbines, and then chief executive roles at General Electric Thermal Products, Irving Oil, and Mitsubishi Power Americas. My work has taken me around the world, from the developing energy markets of Sub-Saharan Africa to Asia's tech hotspots and factories. I've lived and worked in the historical cities of Europe, and I've dealt with complex energy markets of the Middle East, Russia, and North Africa. I've worked for American, Canadian, and Mexican companies, German, Japanese, and Australian, as well as a Chinese energy company. And my teams and I have launched new businesses and renewable power project development energy storage, hydrogen, and more. Throughout my career, I've had the honor of working alongside some of the energy industry's sharpest minds, from tech gurus to project developers, policy shapers to heads of state. These experiences have not only broadened my horizons, they've also given me an insider's look at the energy world. So why am I sharing all this with you? Well, my first answer is that I just retired at the age of 56, and I learned from an earlier failed attempt at retirement, I need a hobby. I love to travel, and I still enjoy thinking about energy markets and climate, so I've decided to make this video podcast as a hobby. The other reason is that I, I feel like what we're hearing from political leaders and the media is an incomplete and sometimes misleading description of the energy transition and climate change. These are complex topics that are shaped by global politics, capital markets, climate science, and the collective efforts of people around the world. They don't lend themselves to the 30-second news cycle. Part of Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, Paul Browning is with us. Paul, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Maria. How are you? Each of my podcast episodes is going to be about 7 to 15 minutes, which is enough time to take a deep enough dive, but a small enough time that you working stiffs can still fit it into your busy days. Having been navigating the scene for over three decades, I want to talk to you about what's really needed to move us toward a sustainable future, and what that will mean for geopolitics, economies, and employment. And the stakes are high. Energy has always played a huge role in which countries have the greatest oh global God. influence. And because I'm doing this as a hobby, I don't have to sanitize my remarks or adhere to any corporate guide rails. I plan to talk to you about hard truths. If you're used to consuming news and social media that tells you only what you want to hear, I'm planning to make you uncomfortable. Whether you're liberal or conservative, climate warrior or climate change denier. And while these first four episodes are focused on China, I'm going to be traveling around the world, as I said earlier. So if you think I've left something important out, or you want me to talk about what this all means to the U.S., Europe, or elsewhere, 
there's a good chance I plan to address it in a future episode. These early episodes are set in the table so I can tell other stories in the future. As we embark on this journey together, I'm going to be using technology to bring a unique perspective into how we explore the narratives of the energy transition. You're seeing me here with the Apple Vision Pro headset, a tool that's revolutionizing how we experience digital content. With this headset, I'm capturing our journey in fully immersive 3D, allowing me to share with you the world through my eyes. For those of you watching this video on traditional platforms like laptops and cell phones, don't worry. The stories, insights, and the essence of our exploration will come through vividly in two dimensions. But for those of you who have access to an Apple Vision Pro, there's an opportunity to go deeper into a 3D immersive experience. This isn't just about seeing the world from my perspective, it's about feeling the depth, the scale, and the texture of the places and moments that are shaping the future of energy. Well, that's a wrap on this first introductory episode of Power Play. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions for future topics on my LinkedIn page. I promise that every respectful, serious comment will receive a respectful, serious response. I've also already released the second episode of Power Play, which has a lot more meat in it. It explores how China's central planners succeeded in dominating the photovoltaic solar industry with help from Germany and California. And it also looks at the future of coal-fired power in China. So, let's take a walk together as we continue traveling the world to find the hard truths of the energy transition. And we witness the unfolding of a new era for humanity and our planet. Let's go. Thank you.